In this video, you're going to learn that how you can fetch records from your Superbase database and then display it on the screen. As you can already see that we created the budget app on our Superbase dashboard. We also created the budgets table right here. And we also inserted some dummy records, groceries and vacation with a limit of 500 and 2000. So how can we display this information on the screen? We already have access to the Superbase client, which is our entry point of any Superbase op operation. And we have also put it inside the environment value, so we can easily access it now. The next thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and create a private function and we can call it fetch to do's or sorry, fetch budgets, right? Because we are fetching budgets. This can be an async function because we are going to use Superbase client and in the Superbase client, you are going to see that there is a function called from.select.execute and that is a, an async function. So next step, try await superbase client dot from the name of the table. Uh, the name of the table is budgets, so I'm just going to say budgets. And you can do it in multiple lines, that's fine. Dot select. Now you can provide the name of the columns that you want to select. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and just use select, so it's just going to select all the columns. And then I will simply say execute this is going to return some sort of a response and we're just going to call value on it. So what exactly is this value? I mean, if you see execute over here, the execute part right there, if I write it out again, execute, it's an async function, it's a throwable function, and you can see that it's returned you Postgres response. Now, we want the actual value out of there. So I can just call the value. And if I go ahead and check out, you can see in the Postgres response what you're getting. If you call the value, then you're going to get the actual type of thing that you're get, trying to get. All right. The type of value. Now, what is this type of value? I mean, what exactly are we trying to get over here? Well, the type of value is a generic type. So this means that on the left hand side over here, we will have to say something that can tell us that what kind of a type it is. But we're not really saying or doing anything over here. So this is really not going to work like this. Since we are returning all the budgets, we also should have the models associated with those budgets. Like how will that budget be represented? So I'm going to go ahead and create a new group. I'll call it models. And let's go ahead and create a new file. I'll call it budget, but you can call it anything you want. Budget is fine, I guess. And let's go ahead and create that. We'll call it budget. It will be codable. We will want it to be, uh, you know, serializable. And I'll also call it identifiable, which is going to, we're going to use it later. We will have an ID property, which will be integer. What other things are we expecting? The name property. And I think we also have the name. I guess we can put the name right now to let, unless it's really needed. And also the limit property, which we can go ahead and say double. We can go back and see. We have an ID property. We have the name property. We have the limit property. You can also create a created add property, although I don't think we need it at this particular time. But if we need it, we can always create that. The other reason that I'm making the int or ID property to be optional is because when we create a budget on our SIF UI application on our client, then at that time we don't really have an ID because it's not saved yet. It's just in memory. So that's the main reason that I'm putting it as optional. Let's go back. And now I should be able to get these values, all right? 
And since we're fetching all the values, I can go over here and create a state variable. We'll call it budgets, which will be an array of budget. And we'll initialize it with empty array. And you're going to go ahead and get me all of the budgets. Since this is a throwable function, we will probably have to catch it. And whenever we get the error, we can just display the error. We can just display it on the console, okay? Now we need to call fetch budgets because right now, although we have created fetch budgets, we never really called it. And we want to display a list. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove all of this. I'm gonna change that to list budgets. And this is the reason that we use identifiable right over here in our budget so that we can iterate through it in our list. I'll get access to a budget. And just for now, I just want to see, can we even display the budget or not? So I'm just gonna to try to display the name. Where should we call the fudge budgets? Well, there is a task modifier that you can use. And the good thing about task modifier is that it's already async. So we can simply call our fetch budget function. And there we go. We're able to display the groceries and the vacation. And it's coming from Superbase database. So that's pretty cool that this is all we need to, to get things done. Now, one of the things that we can add over here is right now we're displaying the text, but we are not displaying the actual, you know, the actual item, the budget, the, the limit. So let's go ahead and wrap this in horizontal stack. Add some spacer in middle. And we can say over here dot limit, which is formatted as currency, and we can provide the currency code for US dollars. So now you can see that the budgets are really nice and they are simply saying, you know, $500 and $2,000. We can even simplify this part or right now it's just hard coded to US dollars. But if you are in a different part of the world, you don't really want to see US dollar. You want to see your own. So I can say probably locale.curn. Uh, I think it's like currency or identifier, currency.identifier. And if that is a problem, we can do US dollar. Let's see if that compiles correctly. Okay. We can even replace all of this stuff and put it somewhere in, uh, in an extension, but right now it's okay. All right. The other thing we can do is this F stack. F stack, currently small, but this is definitely something that we can go ahead and extract out as a sub view. And we can call it budget cell view. You're gonna pass in the budget. There we go. So extracted cell, cell view will be replaced by budget cell view and budget cell view. We're gonna be passing in the budget. So we'll just call budget. And everything else remains the same. It looks also the same. So there's no differences in, in that part. So it's all fine. I also don't really want to make this or name this content view. I want to make this budget list screen. So let's go ahead and refactor that. And I'm gonna call this budget list screen. That's a nice name. Let's go ahead and rename that. It's gonna take some time for our preview to load. But there we go. Everything still looks pretty good. In the preview, now I can go ahead and also use the navigation stack. I can just start wrapping this up and putting the environment value in our, there we go, in our nav on a navigation stack. And since everything is inside the navigation stack, I can go ahead and also add some titles. So I can say budgets. Great, so everything is looking really good now. We're getting the data coming all the way from our Superbase database and we're able to display these things. The next thing that we want to do is 
how can we allow the user to add a new budget? So that is something that we're going to be looking at in the next lecture.